how can we use AI tools to increase our productivity and simply make our lives easier? Today, I'm going to show you a few examples of how I use artificial intelligence to accomplish this. The pace of development and innovation in the artificial intelligence space has been truly staggering. I created Applied AI to help show the utility and the potential of many of these tools so that people can start to implement them in their everyday lives. As of the time of recording this video, OpenAI's ChatGPT just celebrated its one year anniversary. And it still surprises me on a regular basis how few people, young and old, are currently using AI tools in their everyday life, let alone have even heard of them. So before we jump into our first example, I would kindly ask you to check if you are subscribed to the channel. Applied AI is brand new to the YouTube space and every new sub we can get really helps us grow our channel and help get this content out to a larger audience. So if you are new to the channel, at Applied AI, we like to go through a few examples that help to demonstrate greater concepts so that you can apply those concepts in your everyday life and apply them to your specific use cases. So the first example set we're gonna go through is troubleshooting. And that can be for software or more real life problems. So let's now hop over to our ChatGPT interface and see if we can get some help with video editing. So I actually just downloaded a new piece of software called DaVinci Resolve to do my video editing. And of course we can go online and check up on tutorials to see you know, how, how to do certain things within this software. But I find in many cases it's actually much quicker and easier just to use ChatGPT as a co-pilot and ask it questions. So in this case, we're gonna ask it how to add transitions uh, to our video. And it's very impressive that in the vast majority of cases, uh, OpenAI has trained these models on how to use many of these, these, these applications. So. Uh, you can see we're getting a nice rundown here of how to add a transition to our video and we can even take it a step further here and ask what transitions are best for a documentary video that way we can get some advice that might be otherwise a little bit harder to find online um, it would take a bit more research for us to to find out so as you can see here, we're getting a nice rundown of suggestions as to what types of transitions are, are commonly used uh, in, in documentary videos. So this is already pretty useful information. Of course, we can always go further and I encourage users of LLMs to really dig deep in their, in their conversations with, with these models because that's where I find a lot of the more, more useful content, uh, more useful responses arise is through dialogue and through communicating to the, the model exactly what you're looking for and in giving it that type of feedback. What if we're having some technical issues with the program? For example, yesterday when I was using DaVinci, I noticed that when trying to render my video project, export it to MP4, the program was crashing. And I simply checked in with GPT here to see, hey, Number one, why is it crashing? And number two, is there a reason or is there a way we can retrieve or recover that, that, that unfinished rendering um, once that program is restarted? Um, and a nice time saver here already is GPT's informing us that no, unfortunately, uh, there is no built-in feature to resume rendering uh, from a point where it stopped after a crash. And it also gives us a nice rundown here of some potential solutions um, and how we can prevent that, that program from crashing uh, going forward. So again, a lot of this information can be garnered online through web search, um, but the idea here is we can save time and rather than manually go on the internet and troubleshoot ourselves, we can task GPT to go out, find this information if it's not already, not already in its database and give us a very streamlined approach uh, as to how to uh, resolve this issue. 
So there, we've used AI to teach us how to use new software. We've used it to troubleshoot specific issues or glitches we're having with that software and actually get those issues resolved. So let's now move to a more real world example of how we can troubleshoot using AI. So one specific use case that I found particularly interesting is trying to determine which tail light to buy to replace in my truck. So this happened a few weeks ago and me not being uh, a big vehicle person, I thought, hey, let's see if, if ChatGPT can be useful here. And simply by punching in our specifics, you know, make, model, year, et cetera, uh, we can get a specific recommendation as to which tail light we need to buy and really that just saves us some time having to go on and do you know a few minutes worth of research, which yeah, it doesn't seem like a lot, but over the course of a day or a week or a month, you know, if you can stack these productivity gains from using AI, really that's when we start to see these tools actually benefit our lives and streamline many of these tasks um, for a lot of real benefit. And just to demonstrate this real quick, we are going to hop over to OpenAI again. And you can see I just asked which replacement brake light I should buy for this model of vehicle. And to please provide links to Amazon where we can source this stuff. You can see we've got a nice rundown, a few different options. And all we really need to do here is click one of these links. And that will bring us to hopefully an Amazon page where we can source this product. The next type of use case I'm going to show you is more generalized, but it's actually one of my favorite ways to interact with AI on a daily basis. And that's for research. And of course, the internet sites like Wikipedia are great resources for, for learning. And I encourage people to use them, but AI can actually streamline the process for us and allow us to ask higher level questions than we would normally be able to ask to say a Google search engine. So I'll walk you through a few examples here of how I find AI is very helpful for us to be able to gain information about what can be very complex ideas and simplify them for us so we can understand and move on with our day. So the idea here is to bring questions to AI that we would not normally be able to bring to a Google search and get a satisfactory response. So let's say we're planning a trip to Europe and we need to understand what currencies we can use there and how to navigate that. So let's, let's try, for example, asking Google, what currencies can I use in Europe and where? So we get a, a fairly useful response and, and keeping in mind, you know, many of, of these companies are now integrating AI into their software to make their, their searches more effective. Um, but it's still very helpful to be able to ask GPT directly questions like this, where we get a fairly decent answer from Google, but to really answer the question we need answered, we're going to have to do some reading. So let's ask the same question to OpenAI. And you'll see right off the bat, without any iteration, we're already getting a much more useful response. And of course, if we need more information, we can ask specifics to, to ChatGPT here. So say, for example, we are going to Romania and to Iceland. Please provide specifics for these two countries. And again, all this information is available online. The concept here is that we can bring higher level questions to the AI and ultimately save us a few minutes in having, having to gather this information manually. So, um, yeah, just, just one, one example. I'm, I'm sure you could think of, of many other examples that when you have a question and you, you just know 
Google's not going to be able to provide you with an adequate and comprehensive response. Um, we now have an expert that we can go to uh, that will give us uh, really complex and useful information and then we can have a conversation with that expert um, and, and dig deeper uh, where, where necessary. Just to continue with this type of example, let's say we want to know the best place to convert our currency over before we begin our trip to, to Romania and Iceland. So we're gonna ask ChatGPT, where is the best place to exchange our currency to save on the exchange rates? So again, this is a question that Google would not be able to answer in a way that's useful, right? You're gonna get bombarded with all sorts of ads for currency exchange companies. Um, we can really cut through that bias and get what is a helpful response um, as to where we can exchange our currency. So here's already a nice rundown and some general tips for those who might not be as well-traveled. So uh, avoid airports and hotels, right? That's, that's useful advice that you might not get from Google. Um, maybe there's some incentive for, for companies to uh, advertise their currency exchange at the airport. So yeah, just, just one, one way we can, we can approach uh, these tools and get some advice that kind of bypasses the traditional search engine modality. Let's see if we can take this a step further and get some specific recommendations as to where we can have our currency exchange. So I live in Calgary, Canada. Please provide some specific references as to where I should get my currency changed over. And in this case, it's going to tap into its web browsing functionality because we need access to live information um, as to what companies exist in the Calgary area, uh, for example, that OpenAI can then recommend to us um, before we uh, begin our trip. So we'll give this a few, few seconds here to process. And here we have some specific recommendations in the Calgary area. And you can tell these are good recommendations. It's, it is telling us to find a bank if we can. Um, in, in many cases, you know, these, these banks give us the best rates uh, for, for international exchange. So, um, and I, I would imagine here, this link's gonna take us to, yeah, an, an article here that gives us a rundown as to uh, where we can do that. So again, all this information is available online, but the idea here is we can save time from having to manually find these websites, find this information ourselves, let, let AI do the work for us. The last type of example we're gonna go through here is kind of a lifestyle optimizing process. So really a productivity booster. AI has the ability to give us specific and tailored insights or guidance that again we would not be able to get from a more generalized tool like a google search so if we're going to use ai to provide us a custom meal plan and recipes for that meal plan we have the ability to actually plug in specifics about our personal goals as well as our age, other, other metrics that will give us a much more specific and useful response than just going on Google and saying, hey, give me a meal plan, okay? So we're gonna ask GPT for a week's worth of custom meal plan. And we're simply gonna give it our height, weight, and some of the foods we like to eat. Um, I will also mention my goal is to gain muscle mass while weight training. So again, some more specifics we can include in that inquiry and allow GPT to really provide us with 
a meal plan that is specific to our goals and our specific situation. So yeah, you can see it's giving us a nice rundown that includes two snacks. We can of course uh, let GPT know we don't want a snack or we do want a snack and these sort of things to you know create the type of plan that we're looking for. We can do that in the initial prompt or we can do that after we get the first response from, from GPT and, and get it to re redo that um, meal plan for us. So fairly straightforward here. Um, you can see it did try and include a lot of the foods I mentioned I enjoy eating. That's something that you're not gonna get out of a, a, a Google, uh, you know, a, a, a website you're gonna pull from a Google search. Um, <clears throat> You can see there's quite a bit of protein added to this meal plan to really help us meet that goal of, of gaining weight. So we would take this one step further here and say, great, please provide us with a grocery list to create these meals. And just for fun, let's say, also provide me with a store close by that I can source this product. We'll see what it says. Okay, so we have a nice grocery list here to meet the requirements for this week long meal plan. Um, this I wouldn't accept this as a satisfactory response. Um, GPT and other large language models do have a tendency to generalize and simplify. Um, but when, whenever we need specifics, it's important to ask for those specifics. So I need more specifics. Provide, uh, we want, portion size for the grocery shopping. So it will now include details as to exactly how much of these individual products uh, we need to buy. So that's great. Uh, let's cancel that just so we can respond again. Uh, so you can see here it said to find a store near me, it, need, it needs to know the location we're based in. So we are in Calgary, Alberta. So we're using a new thread. It, it's not going to assume where we are. And let's see if it can, it can pull uh, some recommendations for um, where we can find these products. So here's a nice rundown of some, some grocery chains that we can shop at that will that will carry these ones. Um, and let's iterate one step further here and say, what is on average the lowest price store from these options? Again, just to really um, encourage you to iterate with these responses and make sure you get as much useful information from the AI as possible. And in many cases, you'll be surprised as to how granular and how specific some of this feedback we can get from these models is. So, um, you know, it, of course, some of these, these questions are so general that it's impossible to answer exactly, but it will do its best to narrow it down and say, hey, you know, in this order, these are the stores we know to be the best, best prices. Um, and, you know, from here, we, we, could, we could keep going further and, and try and garner more information. But um, I think this demonstrates how in, in really just a few minutes, we're able to create, you know, a, a week's worth of meals uh, and exact portion sizes that we need to go find so that we can um, actually make this, this meal plan. Really hope you found this information useful and I thank you so much for staying to the end of the video. I would encourage you to try and find ways to implement these AI tools in your everyday life to save time and increase productivity. 
please do let me know. I'm very curious to hear how you guys are using these tools to increase your productivity day to day.